Web design. It's broken. It just crumbled to sand in your hands and it's just disappointing. Today we are going to talk about budget. The, the big one. Budget. 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 It is such a huge topic but I'm finally gonna lay down the final word on budget. Specifically how much you should spend when you're buying a website. I've got the answer for you. You ready? You ready for it? £500,000 a week. There we go. Did it. Did it. That was easy. I'm out. See you later. And web design is fixed. No. <laughs> If you do have 500,000 a week to spend on a website, you should get in touch with me. I think we could work with that. Budget. It's, it's such a huge topic. No one's really kind of tackling the answers. There's a few, there's a few articles on, on the internet that are like, well, if you want this type of website, you should spend around this much. And if you want that type of website, you should spend around that much. It really comes down to a few factors, namely your attitude towards risk. Um, whether you're, whether you're coming from a gain or a pain perspective and how much you actually stand to make out of it. What you're really doing is investing in a website. You're, you're looking for it to create a return. You want it to be putting money back into your pocket. If you don't want it to do that, then it's only going to be acting detrimentally. It's only going to be taking money or reputation or whatever out of your pocket. And you really need to rethink the reasons why you're doing this in the first place. Go back to one of my previous videos um, where I talk about what, where I ask you the question, why are you doing this in the first place? So the first thing that we've got to understand when we're asking the question, how much does a website cost? How much should I spend on a website? We've really got to appreciate that that question, all you're doing is you're trying to give yourself what they call an anchor. This is literally just a psychological stake in the ground so that your brain can go, okay, well, I've got a point to start from. It really doesn't matter what that number is, but it becomes your anchor. The first price you hear becomes your anchor. And around that point, you will base all value judgments. So be careful when you're asking this question because you might end up with a, a massively overinflated number that completely puts you off of even going down that route when actually you could have got something that worked for you at a reasonable price. And if you get a number that's too low, you're gonna look around and think, hey, well, this is all way too expensive and not actually start engaging in the conversations to help you understand the value that it could bring. There is another thing that you need to be really aware of when you're trying to create a budget for a website. And that is that you, like me, like everyone else on the planet, we are naturally risk averse. Yeah, we, we have loss aversion. Most people agree with the statement that it is better to not lose five pounds than it is to find five pounds. It's the same five pounds. It's weird. We're hardwired to avert losses. We try and keep what we have and therefore we're less likely to risk that in search of future gains. So this means that you're naturally going to be skeptical about the gains that you can create with a website. You're naturally going to want to spend as little as 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 possible. And that means that you're at a risk of actually under investing when you're when you're when you're buying a website, you're at a risk of under investing because you're averse to loss. I, I'm exactly the same. The amount of times that I've bought things that I need on say Amazon and gone for the cheapest possible one because I wasn't entirely sure if you know, if it would bring me the thing that I was looking for. The, the reality is, is that I end up spending double because, you know, buy cheap, buy twice. Um, 
but you can actually underinvest and if you do especially in something like a website it's like underinvesting in in your in your team member if you if you hire a new salesman and you underinvest in him well then he's not going to do uh, as good a job as he possibly could do if you you know if you're picking if you're picking your team members based on the salary that they're willing to accept then you're probably underinvesting and you're not actually realizing that if you spend a little bit more you can get like disproportionately larger returns the third thing that you really need to be aware of but before you start thinking about your budget is whether you're coming from a pain perspective or a gain perspective. Are you looking to this website to help you reach new markets, to help you, I don't know, dominate the competition, to help you boost sales? Is it a gain thing? Are you launching a new business, a new product? Or are you looking at it from a pain perspective? Are you looking at it and thinking, well, how can I use this website to help me automate things, cut costs, reduce overhead, things like that. Maybe you've got a whole bunch of bad reviews on your existing website and so you're almost being forced by your customers, forced by your marketplace to up your game. What you're really trying to do there is manage losses. You approach these, you can buy the same thing in two different ways and your experience and therefore what you're willing to spend completely changes depending on whether you're coming from a pain or a gain perspective. The final line on it is using an analogy that we use sometimes. It's 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 based around cars basically. Are you are you just trying to get to and from work or are you trying to win Formula One the Formula One Grand Prix? You need very different types of cars to be able to do each of those things. There's no point in buying a Formula One car because when you pull up in the Sainsbury's car park, you're gonna have nowhere to put your shopping. Likewise, there's no point in buying a Fiat Panda and taking it to the track. So the better you can understand what type of race it is that your business is trying to win or what type of things your business are trying to do with a website and what that's worth to you is the better you're gonna be able to start creating a realistic budget and get a return that's more in line with your expectations. My name is Aaron Taylor. I'm helping you to make better decisions and have better conversations when you're buying a website. Till next time. I fix web design. I fix web design. I fix web design.